Well, folks, let me tell you what happened yesterday. Oh, Bush told the UN to screw off, which I think is good, but he's still passive aggressive, you know what I mean? Comes out there, he's like shaking like a leaf. Now, I agree with Kofi Annan what he said. We were preemptive. I mean, we only waited 12 years. That was premature and impulsive. Um, and 12 years is not a long time, especially if you're one of the Iraqis. Millions are being tortured and put in mass graves that we keep finding everywhere. Uh, the mass graves are obviously not as bad as our country, violating the UNIC, I mean the UN, uh, an organization that let Rwanda, Bosnia, Sierra Leone, all these atrocities. You guys couldn't break up a pillow fight between the Olsen twins. But in fairness, who would want to? I mean, you know, it's got a certain tinge. Well, but seriously, you've ignored more atrocities than Paula Abdul and Randy Jackson. And we're kind of like Simon Cowell. People don't like us, we're arrogant, but the truth is the truth, you know? The next big article was uh, people afraid about Bush wanting to give money to faith-based programs because uh, they might violate church and state separation. That's true. Like the federal government, you mean, using tax money to pay for a Muslim chaplain in Guantanamo Bay to give religious counsel to the Islamic extremists? <laughs> yeah. Couldn't you send down, like, a guitar teacher? I don't think they need really emphasis on religion. They seem to have gotten that part correct. They don't really... I don't know. Now they're saying that he's connected, that guy was James Yee, by the way, connected to Ahmed I. Halabi, a translator for the Air Force, who's on his way to Syria with some information when he got arrested. Now, what is our country coming to when you can't trust our military secrets with a guy named Ahmed I. Halabi? I don't know. Force leaders at the Pentagon have ignored more than 140 sexual assaults on female cadets in the past decade. Maybe they need that Muslim translator to uh, tell them no means no. I don't know. <laughs> but what do you guys think? Why is this story, why, what is it that this story took so long to come out, Greg? Uh, prob probably for the same reason it took us 18 hours to fly back from Guantanamo Bay on our USO tour, which is that the government is a, uh, military is a giant bureaucratic monster that doesn't move very quickly, and also because a lot of those women were asking for it. Whoa! <laughs> I see. I think the real disgrace here is that somebody didn't tape it, you know? Cadets gone wild! That would be fantastic. <laughs> He's from Australia, that's, that's how I think. <laughs> but you know what, we're making such a big deal about it, and, and it is a big deal, but it, it's widespread. It's not just the Air Force, it's all the college campuses. And you're not just talking about women, you're talking about, you know, hazing where guys are, are ramming broomsticks up the pledges butts to get into the fraternity. I think we should, you know... What the hell is it? Well, why is it so prevalent then? Why, why would that kind of thing exist? I think probably not enough uh, study time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to Idle Hines yeah. hands the devil's uh, workshop. Richard? I think we live in a very uh, macho culture, and when you're in the military, uh, <laughs> see what I mean by macho? <laughs> <laughs> Renee got me these. <laughs> no, I think that the military and in the sports world, for some reason, men feel that they, uh, they don't have to go through the niceties of uh, civil discourse with women, and it's a problem. What, like asking them out? Like asking them out and asking them if they want to do something that they don't want to do and then well, doing it anyway. How about just a date rate joke? You know, just some date rate drugs. Why not that? I mean, why is they, you know, it's but, one of those things. But th this case in particular was extreme. I mean, we're not just talking about just general sexual harassment. They, they said uh, one out of five women in this academy claims or, you know, says that she was sexually... You look good. <laughs> <laughs> This is why I came on this show, because of the serious discussion of our current issues, ladies and gentlemen. But it's a but numbers game. He's right. One out of five is a high percentage. One out of Come five. On. I mean, they really... One out of five... <laughs> one out of five, they should probably... Re I mean, they should get it to, like, one out of seven. That sounds like... <laughs> the more than national average? Well, yeah, just more of a... Well, what do you guys number. think? Don't you think it's a little freaky? One out of five is a lot. Yeah, but how many women in the, in the Air Force? Um... What are you trying to say? Yeah. Seven women. Oh, okay. Five. 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 Australia. Do they still have an army? I like Australia. I'll tell you why. Because they always back us up. That's right. I know they're drunk and they don't know, they're probably in a blackout when they do it, but anytime they have a war, you guys are right there. Do you still wear those crazy hats? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't oh, yeah. rape legal in Australia or something? Everything's What's going on legal now? in Australia. Yeah, it's kind of like an old, it's like the old west. Yeah, exactly. We ride kangaroos to school, yeah. Oh, yeah. brother. Yeah, that's, that's not true. It is. That's not true. Hey, don't Let me ask you this. But don't. it is like a macho culture, right? They yeah. think everything's fruity and like, you know, like, you know, it's like 1940, right? Exactly. Yeah, we're not quite that, you know, hip, but, you know, we've got a few. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cool place. Yeah, it's a cool place. We, we got, got tough crowd down there. We 
we do? Yeah, uh huh. Tough crowd. Tough crowd. Tough crowd. Tough crowd. Yeah. Yeah. It's a tough crowd. Well, it's a former penal colony. It's a tough audience. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it's Irish criminals settled down. Well, that's there, sort of the it? difference between us and you. We, we, we began as a penal colony and then evolved, and you guys <laughs> sort of came here as pilgrims and turned into a penal colony. Hey, wait a minute. Yeah, whoa, whoa. <laughs> hey, man, wait a minute. <laughs> Hey, I did not come here as a pilgrim. My people came as slaves. We worked our way over here, all right? That's true. It was the white people that came for the free ride. Hey. Now listen, the White House has awarded $30 million in grants to religious faith-based programs, okay? Um, now, is there really a danger? People are having a heart attack. Is there really a danger with this, Renee? Let me ask you. Well, my dad's a Pentecostal preacher. I wouldn't give religious-based people anything because they. <laughs> I'm sorry. Look at look at pre preachers. I mean, at least black preachers. Look how, how they, they got nice cars. They got the best cars you ever seen. They wearing Armani suits. They look like you know holy pimps. I mean, I, don't, I, don't, I wouldn't trust them with any kind of money. And they got little slush funds for their baby mama. Yes, they do, Reverend Jesse Jackson. Yes, they do. Now this is this is a blatant. This faith-based initiative thing is a blatant violation of of the church separation of church and state. And I'm all for giving the church money, especially since they've they've used all theirs on sex abuse. <laughs> but, they, the causes are getting a little low. But You're it's right. uh, it's a it's a blatant by it's a blatant by. And the worst part about it all really is that is that it shows the way the Bush administration sort of the arrogant way that it's exercising power, which is th th they're not even going through Congress. They're just you know by executive order saying, look, we're now going to use this money to to give out federal funds to 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 church institutions, right. which nobody authorized, nobody voted for. Well, they won't be around much longer. Oh, I say we give the money. Why don't we just give all the money to the Mormons and teach the kids that polygamy is a good thing? I like the way right, you think. Right. Again, <laughs> again, all and I'm saying is this. Look, the bottom line is don't act like in this country's culture, you have a bunch of people that are always willing to go, yeah, those crazy fundamentalists, but then if you say anything about well, it, they weren't well, crazy. But if you don't say anything about Islam, they go, oh, hey, wait a minute, that's a people's religion. Why don't you stop? That's but in bad taste. They, it's only a nice thing to hang out with. I'm talking about the media, the whole oh. country's like that. We're, we're not talking about fundamentalist Christians here. We're talking about taking $20 billion right. in federal funds. Million. Say, 20, no, 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 it's 20 30. billion. It's 30 no, million. The 30, 30, million. Million, the 30 million is used for a program to decide to 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 recruit these churches to to apply for the 20 billion that's uh. available. So what? <laughs> Why, can't why, why, don't, why, don't, why don't we have government? Pro why, does it, why do we have to rely on the churches to do it? Right. Because the church, you guys act like the church has been up to corrupt. Because they're the only part when you give money to that might actually do some good for poor people. That's well, why. But what but have they done? It's with the, the government's role. Yeah. All I'm saying is, I want everyone just to admit one thing. Sure. Or we're why? not going to commercial. Admit that <laughs> as organizations go, most religious organizations do more good than any other stupid fake club organizations around the world. That's a, a naive, sweet. Oh, no. <laughs> Folks, if you don't watch commercials today, you won't feel nostalgic when we have a special on commercials 20 years from now. Remember that. We'll be right back. <laughs> We're going to talk about conspiracy theories because Bells has a book about them and also because you want to talk about conspiracy theories, it said sugar daddy. This is not a sugar daddy in a box. They got some stupid banana thing. <gasps> That's not a conspiracy? All right, look. <laughs> the JFK assassination, the men in black, the fake landing on the moon, and Roswell. Let's start with Roswell. Uh, now, tell us what happened in Roswell according to the conspiracy part. In 1947, July 6th, a strange craft hovered over... No. Uh, <laughs> actually, what happened, something did happen. Something clearly crashed there. And some people think that it was an alien ship and bodies were retrieved. There are some contemporaneous witnesses who would testify to that. But in the subsequent years, the story has changed many times. And the government has said that it was nothing. And then they said it was a weather balloon. Then they said it was crashed dummies that, were, that fell from the sky. That, but that was <laughs> five years later. So they said people have screwed up memories. They, they remembered something in 1952 that they thought happened in 1947. What's not helping this, and I'll finish in a second. You have time, ladies and gentlemen? Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, what's not helping this is that the government, if, there's, if there were aliens or not, right. the point is the government has changed their story in such bizarre ways so many times that it's an incredibly suspicious incident. Yeah, but don't you also think it's, even if they did, even if there were aliens, they did a good job. Nobody's messed with us since 1947. They yeah. killed them. <laughs> It worked. They must have been like the Victorian. No, they taught baby. us. They they yeah. they gave us Velcro. <laughs> we, can, can I just ask you something? Yeah. What, what does Norton's headshot have to do with conspiracy? <laughs> Norton. Oh. <laughs> that does look like Norton at 65. You're right. <laughs> when I get older. But it actually happened in 52. Yes, 47, 51. 
Um, does anyone else believe in any of these things? No. What about what? Well, I just don't think any of these. Oi! <laughs> hey! <laughs> hey, come on, mate. No, I don't understand these conspiracy theories. Like, you know, JFK, he didn't get shot. You know what happened? He's in the car. You've seen the film. His wife's nag and nag and nag. His head just exploded. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. That's what happened. Hey, listen. You don't, we don't go to your country and make fun of Paul Hogan. Right? Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> and Elvis is not alive. Trust me, if he was alive, he would never let his daughter be out singing that crap or dating Michael Jackson. I'm hey. telling you that. Let me tell you something else. Keep it up, we're going to make fun of Midnight Oil. Yeah. Well, the, the, pro the problem with all these conspiracy theories is... First of all, on the one, people who are prone to believe in conspiracy theories, especially when it comes to the government, is that on the one hand, they attribute these qualities to the government of being evil and manipulative and, and uh, you know, secretive and brilliant, but they also tend to be the people who, who believe the government's inept and inefficient. I mean, you have to be some kind of genius mm. to keep these things is secret that you, overall. Belza? Is that you, Belzer? Is that you know point these, these, are, these are obviously people who are ill-informed and ill-read. Um, the government has done many conspiracies that they've gotten away with. They've been revealed over time. They tested medicine on people for years, yeah. as you know, the Tuskegee thing. The Tuskegee, thing. that's true. Uh, I'm with they, you on that, They brother. release <laughs> toxins right, into revealed. the subways. No, I mean, they've been doing And it, when it's revealed, we say, oh, right. you know, that they're stupid and they couldn't do it. They Crack did. in the hood. They can't oh, keep secrets. Mm -hmm. They have kept secrets. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, so you're they saying keep that secrets up to a point, but not on a level of a faking a lunar landing. So then you, you would like say that. that you would be more inclined to believe a group of, like, Nazis in Idaho when they said there's a Jewish banking or media conspiracy, you think they have a good point well, too? Wasn't there? <laughs> <laughs> Who's your boss? Oh no, oh. you leave. Well, who's your boss? Questions. Leave Sai out of this. No, but see? Wait, I have a, the men in black, though. What's wrong they, with the Jewish people running banking and? The fact of the matter is, hey, really you know what? With that. As long as they get black people loans, hey, let them own yeah, the banks. We sure. can care less. I mean, so many of these, so many of these kind of conspiracies, that, you know, the, 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 all the. Um, you know, the UFO stuff, they say, well, these people are kept quiet by these mysterious men in black that show up. And right, right. And these That's men in black are supposedly these genius beings, whoever the hell they are. But, you know, on the one hand, they, they, they supposedly killed Beethoven, and yet Justin Timberlake roams the earth freely. <laughs> Where, so, where's, the like where's the justice? Where's the justice? James. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you had something to talk about. Your subject today was you feel like the obsession with Ben and Jen that bothers you? Just come to this country and all I see is Ben and Jen, Ben and Jen. Like, every, like they, they follow Ben and Jen. Any, any paparazzi can find Ben and Jen. You, you guys can't find Bin Laden? Why don't you send the paparazzi, <laughs> you know? Good point. The you, paparazzi going for Bin Laden is not a bad idea. Good point. <laughs> they did. That would be a good idea to send them hunting for them. Yeah, exactly. It'd do Let them good to give them some spiritual, uh, yeah. Exactly. I like that idea. You're let a real solution guy. Yeah. But let me ask you something. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean that. But That's well, right. honestly, oh, we we if either you get Kylie Minogue out of here, or we're gonna do it for you. Listen, enough is enough. Listen, enough is enough. You, you know? guys, you guys embrace the crocodile hunter and all of these other people. All right. We, we looked at the crocodile hunter and went, this guy's a lunatic getting well, out of here. And you well, went, no, he's awesome. Wait, wait a second. Wait, every, wait a minute. We every awesome every Australian comic. <laughs> Every Australian comic I've ever seen has 20-minute crocodile hunter chunk. Oh, they love him. <laughs> now, Greg, speaking of overseas action, what about this uh, David Blaine thing? You feel like there's something behind that besides just a... Well, explain, uh, explain what it is for no. those that don't know. <laughs> I, don't like to, I don't like to waste people's time for this person. Well, it's, it's actually just something that's more amusing me than anything else. It's this David Blaine guy who's, who's a, a magician. Although this thing that he's apparently... He's, He's hanging himself in a lucite box some, in London for right, 40, plans on making it 44 days without eating. Right. Uh, and people are saying, well, that's not really magic, as if the other crap no. is really magic. Uh, but he, he's plans on suspending himself there for 44 oh. days without eating, and, and the, the supposedly urbane and sophisticated Brits are pelting him with eggs and oh. hitting him with golf balls. And, and the, the, my favorite thing is there was a guy who actually used a remote control helicopter to fly a cheeseburger right up to his belly. <laughs> that is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Renee, let's talk about this uh, Seattle coffee tax. What do you have against it? Are you well, from Seattle? No, I'm not from Seattle. I'm from San Francisco, but, but we like drink coffee, coffee as All well. Right. But they tried to get them to take 10%. The coffee drinkers were supposed to bear the burden for some sort of, you know, money. Education. Go, educa but wait a minute. Why just the coffee drinkers? There are other people who consume addictive substances. Why not the crackheads? I think, I mean, yeah. crack babies. We know they got kids. They got crack babies. <laughs> and it's been shown that the crack babies are going to be stupid. They should be putting it to the pot right now. That's what I think. Don't put all this on the coffee drinkers. Uh -uh. That's a good point. Yeah. Yes. Um, France. Yes. What's going on? What's with the attitude towards well, you? Know? Uh, the thing he is spends a lot of time in France. Uh, yeah, I have a house there. in France and the French... Thank you for your intelligence. <laughs> uh, let me respond to that, sir. Uh, <laughs> when the French get up in the morning, they go to... They, the first thing they do with their coffee is they have a drink. They drink alcohol. They go to lunch. They have a, they have a two-hour lunch and they drink 
First, before the dinner, they have the drink, the, the aperitif. Then they have three, four glasses of wine, five glasses of wine. Have another drink, then another shooter. Right. By the time they go back to work, they're so f***ed up, they don't know where they are. Why right. do we care what they say? They're well, drunk. It's true. But they the, might best wanna scenery, the best scenery, the best food, the yeah. art. The, they might want to have time in a drink thing for throwing a shower once in a while is all what? I'm saying, right? No, they are, but they are, they are a, more, a more sophisticated culture, as they always remind us, and they do have a more sophisticated social safety net, the kind that enables them to go to the Riviera and sun themselves in their ball hugger man thongs while they're old people. <laughs> Wow, they're old people at home oh, crying. That's true. We're not only old, poor old people in France. Mon Dieu. Qu'est-ce que vous êtes? I don't know. We're just thinning, know, that, they're just thinning the herd. They're just thinning the herd. Folks, what separates us from animals is they don't have to watch commercials. Stay human <laughs> and watch these. <laughs> we'll be right back. There have been two major events unsolved that have bothered the American psyche for all these years. One, the Kennedy assassination. The other, the Tupac assassination. Tonight, I will lay it all out for you, okay? Now, the information we have is that Tupac Shakur was in a car <laughs> driven by Suge Knight. A second car pulled up next to them and fired 13 shots, four hitting Tupac, one hitting Suge. Uh, let's look at what happened that night or what the Vegas police would have you believe happened. Notice the angle at which the bullets entered Tupac. The first one hit his right hand, then one in the right hip, the right thigh, the bullet that killed him, the right chest near the armpit. Funny, isn't it? It was clearly a setup, a coup d'etat, shooting fish in a barrel. Now this is where it gets more complicated. The car is moving down Las Vegas Boulevard. You've got Sheena Easton co-headlining at the Riv with Messina from Loggins and Messina. She had beef with Tupac because one time he accidentally said to her, I love your music, Miss Benatar. <laughs> then, over at the Trop, you've got Danny Gans, the master of voices. He didn't like Tupac because the Death Row crew once started a ruckus at the end of his show and spoiled his big closer, where he does Al Pacino and Louis Armstrong getting Jimmy Stewart stoned. <laughs> very funny. Now they look, they make a left. Right before the gunman pulls up, what the police don't want you to know is that Siegfried and Roy <laughs> had just had a nasty fight over a Guatemalan busboy from the $1.99 buffet. <laughs> Siegfried chased him down out of Caesars with an angry tiger that Roy had gotten fired for irritable bowel syndrome in 98. <laughs> Apparently the tiger was scraping his butt across the floor when Roy would be trying to do the fire hoop. Well, let's look at the witnesses in Vegas that night. You got the fat lady from Wisconsin standing in front of Circus Circus, wearing acid wash jeans and a Camp Beverly Hills sweatshirt. 97, you know. Two Tulsa salesmen, salesmen in a rented Sebring fighting with a Rastafarian in front of the Luxor. Typical Vegas night. So I guess we'll never know what happened that night. We'll never solve Tupac's murder. And the Guatemalan busboy will never find out how he woke up that morning in Caesar's Fountain, wearing a Tony the Tiger mask, <laughs> naked, tied up with a silver lame German blood sausage stuffed up his butt, and a, a tattoo on the small of his back that said Deutschland Oberalis. <laughs> but I guess it's true what the commercial says about Vegas. What happens there stays there. Or as that Guatemalan busboy would say, it's great. Yeah!